In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul begins by reminding his readers of the gospel that he preaches. The the word gospel means good news. And so he's saying, this is the good news that that I've been preaching. You know, first of all, he, he says that Christ died for our sins, just as the Holy Scripture said. Secondly, he said that Christ was buried. And third, that Christ was raised. So, you know, what Paul is saying is the basics of the gospel that he preaches are also what we recited in part of the Apostles' Creed earlier in the service uh, today. I believe in Jesus Christ who was crucified, died, and buried. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. Paul also gives um, testimony to the fact that, that Jesus appeared to, to several after you know, after he was raised from the tomb. First of all, he appeared to, to Peter. He appeared to the 12 disciples. He appeared to more than 500 believers in, in one place. He appeared to James. And, and Paul says that he also appeared to me on, on the road to Damascus. Well, with that as background for this morning's scripture reading, as far as what it is, the gospel that has been preached and how Christ has revealed himself, would invite you to, to stand as I read the, the 1 Corinthians 15, beginning with verse 12. As I conclude, I'll say, uh, the Lord be, uh, th- this is the word of the Lord, and I would invite you to respond by saying, thanks be to God. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all died, So in Christ, all will be made alive. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. It was June 18th, 1815. It was the the Battle of Waterloo. The French were under the command of Napoleon, and the Allied forces of the British, Dutch, and and Germans were under the command of Wellington. Now, the people of, of England didn't have a very efficient way to, to communicate how things were going on the, the war front. So one of the things that they would do would be to put a message up on the tower of the Winchester Cathedral. It was late in the day, and it flashed this sign up on the cathedral. W-E-L-L-I-N-G-T-O-N-D-E-F. E-A-T-E-D. And as the message went up, a fog fell over the, the cathedral. Well, word began to, to, um, to spread through the, the city and the countryside that Wellington had been defeated. They were sad and, and gloomy when they heard the news of their, of their country's loss in, in the war. But suddenly the, the fog lifted. And they realized that the message on the cathedral was not two words, but rather four words. The message was, Wellington defeated the enemy. Well, how the mood changed at that point and and news spread throughout the the land. Their sorrow turned into joy. Their defeat turned into victory. So it was when Jesus was laid in the tomb. Hope had died in the hearts of his followers. 
After the crucifixion, the the fog of disappointment and and misunderstanding had crept into the lives of the the friends of, of Jesus. Only part of the message was visible on that Good Friday. That message on on Good Friday was Christ defeated. But then on the third day, the fog of disappointment and and misunderstanding raised and, and they saw the whole message, the whole message being Christ defeated death. Their defeat was turned into victory. Death was turned into life. We often talk about the the importance of the resurrection. And it is something that is critical to to our Christian faith. It's it's pivotal in in the Christian faith. But this morning as I talk about the the resurrection, I want to talk about it in a little bit different way. I want to think about the question, what if Jesus had not been raised from the dead? What are the implications if Jesus was not resurrected from the dead? First of all, if Jesus was not resurrected from the dead, he would be a liar. You know, Jesus predicted his resurrection on several occasions. These predictions may seem obvious to us as we are on this side of, of the resurrection, but some of the, the messages that he gave, some of the clues that he gave to his disciples were not nearly as, as clear to them as they may seem to us today. In John chapter 2, verse 19, it says that Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and he was referring to the temple of his body, destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. In Matthew 16, 21, it says that from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hand of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. In Matthew 12, 40, Jesus said, For as Jonah was was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. When Jesus spoke to to Peter at the Last Supper, predicting that that Peter was going to, to deny Jesus, Jesus said to Peter, But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, then he would be a liar. And if Jesus was not being honest about the resurrection, then is there anything else that he said or taught that we could believe? If Jesus did not rise from the dead, then there would be no gospel. There would be no good news. In verse 14 in this morning's scripture, Paul writes, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. D.L. Moody had a a class of young preachers and, and his assignment to them was that they were to go out in the neighborhoods of Chicago and set up tents and they were to, to preach some revival meetings. Well, Unbeknownst to one of the students, D.L. Moody snuck into his tent one night to listen to him preach. He, he was a great preacher. He preached with passion. He, he preached about the cross and, and the forgiveness of sins. And as he concluded, he said, come back tomorrow night and I'll tell you about how Jesus was resurrected from the dead. Well, after the people left, Moody went up and talked with the young man and And he said, young man, many of these people will not be back tomorrow night. And so he said, you've only told them half the message. You've only told them half the good news. You've only told them half of the gospel. Romans 4.25 says, he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Moody said, a half gospel is no gospel at all. If there is no resurrection, in verse 14, Paul not only says that his preaching is useless, but he also says that faith is useless. Our faith is useless if Christ was not raised from the dead. In verse 17, he says that your faith is futile because your sins have not been forgiven. If Jesus was not raised from the dead then there is no means by which our sins are forgiven if Jesus did not have power over sin and the grave. 
If Jesus was not raised from the dead, in verse 15, Paul says that they are spreading lies. The message that they are, are, are proclaiming on God's behalf, that Jesus has conquered death in the grave, if he was not raised, then Paul says that the message they are preaching is, is spreading lies. They're not telling the truth about God. And if Jesus was not raised from the dead, then we have no hope for the future. In verse 18, Paul says that those who have fallen asleep, those who have died are lost. If Jesus has not been raised from the dead, then we too have no reason for hope if if Christ has, has not been risen from the dead. There are those who believe that That when life is over, that's it. When you're dead, you're dead. But there is evidence that Christ has been raised from the dead. There is evidence that there is more to life than what we see here on earth. There are many religions whose spiritual leaders have died, but Christianity is the only one that, that has a Messiah who did not stay in the grave, that left the grave empty. This afternoon, I'm going to be participating in a memorial service for a good friend and, and colleague who was the pastor at the, the First United Methodist Church in, in, in Wabash. You know, David had a hope that was beyond the grave. There's more to life than, than the here and now. I love the way that uh, Max Lucado talks about it in his children's story, Tell Me the Secrets. Lucado writes, Many think death is when you go to sleep. They're wrong. Death is when you finally wake up. Death is when you see what God has seen all along. If Jesus had not been raised from the dead, when we go to to a funeral, all we have to do is to remember the one who lived because there would be no hope beyond the, the grave. But since Jesus did rise from the dead... There is reason for hope for those who who believe in Him. This life is but a stepping stone to all that God has prepared for us. A final implication, if, if Jesus did not rise from the dead, is that His followers suffered for no reason. Many of Jesus' followers were imprisoned. They, they were tortured. Many of them were, were executed by, by brutal means. If, if they were propagating a lie, someone would have broke ranks. Someone would have, have said, this lie is not worth dying for. But because they had witnessed Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, because of what they had experienced, because of what they had seen, they were willing to die for the truth. They were willing to give witness to the truth to the very end. In Acts chapter 5, Peter and some of the apostles have been arrested and they're appearing before the Sanhedrin. And one of the members of the Sanhedrin by the name of Gamaliel was, was respected among the, the Sanhedrin. He was also one who was honored by, by the people. You know, he was, was well known. And so as they were bringing Peter and some of the apostles uh, in front of them, trying to get them to be silent and, and telling about the, the message of Christ, Gamaliel raised in front of the crowd and he gave them some wise counsel. He said, remember that man who stood before us some time ago who had 400 followers and, and, and when he was killed, his, um, his followers disbanded and all that he said was going to happen didn't happen. He said, then there was the man who, who was named Judas from Galilee who led a band of people in a revolt. He too was killed and his followers scattered. Therefore, Gamaliel said that his conclusion was that they should leave these men alone. He said, if they are just preaching, if they are just telling this story of their own accord, he said, it will die out. Their story will go away in, in a short period of time. But he said, if they are from God, you will not be able to stop them. You'll only find yourself fighting against God. Well, 
Nearly 2,000 years later, this message has not been silenced. It has not faded away. The, the evidence from the biblical record, from personal testimony, and from historical record, concludes that Jesus was risen from the dead. The Gospel writer John quotes Jesus as saying, God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son, that whoever would believe in Him should not perish, but would have the promise of eternal life. I love the story of, of a father and son who are, are driving in their car down a country road and on a spring day. Their windows are down, the breezes are blowing through, and a bumblebee flies into the car. Well, the little boy panics because... He's deathly allergic to the sting of a bee. And the father reached out and grabbed the bumblebee, and then he released it. As the bumblebee went, went uh, flying again, the little boy began to, to panic once again. And the father reached out his hand again and said to the little boy, You don't need to worry. The stinger is in my hand. This is the story of Easter. We don't need to be afraid of death anymore. Christ faced death for us. He has taken the sting. For those who put their faith in Him, there is forgiveness. For those who put their faith in Christ, there is the promise and the hope of eternal life. If you've never invited Christ into your heart and life, if you've never asked for forgiveness of your sins, on the back of the bulletin there's a, a prayer of salvation, or, or you can simply pray your own simple prayer, saying, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and forgive me for my sins. If Jesus was not resurrected from the dead, we have no reason for hope. But... He did rise from the dead. There, there's evidence pointing to, to that conclusion. And for those who believe, His resurrection is eternally transforming. His resurrection is a reason for eternal hope. Let us pray. Lord, we thank You for sending Your Son into the world. And we thank You that the tomb was empty on that first Easter morning. Lord, I pray for that one in, in this day who maybe knows the, the message of Christ but, but has not embraced it in, in their own life. Lord, I pray that as they would, would call out to you at their, their point of need that, that your Holy Spirit would, would come near. Lord, as they invite you to come into their heart and life, as they invite you to forgive them for their sins, may there be transformation of, of their heart and life. Lord, help us each to live as, as men and women of hope, to live as men and women of the resurrection. For those who, who reflect Jesus in all that we say and do, through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.